Now, I know you already saw the title, and it's very controversial because I know many of the people that's probably going to accidentally watch this or purposely watch it, they're going to be concerned about what is this guy's views about alcohol and clubbing or partying. Well, first off, I want to just go ahead and say is that, you know, we have to first look beyond the reasons why we choose to commit, or not commit, but choose to club or choose to drink alcohol. Um, someone asked me this question. They wanted me to talk about partying, alcohol, and clubbing, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about it. But anything that you do in this life, you got to understand what's the motive behind me doing it. Am I drinking alcohol uh, to compensate for something that's supposed to heal me? Am I drinking alcohol because I know it's going to get me a little bit tipsy, a little bit loose, so I can enjoy dancing and I can be able to, you know, have sex at the end of the night? You have to understand what's the motives out of it. And then first off, you got to ask yourself, would Jesus do it? Now, <clears throat> the reason why Satan has placed this in such a way in adult life is that he knows that these people are growing into maturity. Everyone from a young age have been anticipating their adulthood. And with that anticipation comes this whole aura of, I can't wait to experience this. You only live a certain amount of time, so let me experience this. And you get so we get so caught up sometime on, I have to experience it. What you don't know is Satan this whole time through your childhood has built, has built such an appetite for it through the, what we see on TV, through what we see on the internet, through what we see in movies. He's pushed us through this appetite <clears throat> to enjoy what is being falsely presented on television. Not knowing that these things, that if you put yourself in that environment, will take away your reasoning. That's why Satan's ultimate goal is for you to lose your ability to reason, to lose your ability to think, to lose your ability to use common sense. And with that, he knows that if a person loses his ability to think or his ability to use common sense, then chances are they will do stuff out of their heightened emotions. <clears throat> heightened emotions mean when stuff is presented your emotions indicate how you feel about it. So with alcohol, we all know that alcohol is in a position where it takes away your reasoning for a while. It causes you to be loose. You, you say things you wouldn't normally say. You do things you wouldn't normally do. Now you have to ask your question, why am I doing it? What's the motive for me drinking alcohol? See, I know in some cultures they drink wine. I'm not talking about wine in certain cultures. Because they drink because it's culture. That's the motive behind why they drink it. It's because of culture. But if your motive, and don't lie to me saying, oh, it's because of my culture. But if you know for a fact that you're doing it for sinful pleasures or sinful appetites, now you got to question yourself. Now I'm in the gray area. Now I'm not even in the gray area, but you're in the dark area. Because now you're walking in darkness because you want to facilitate your fleshly needs. You want to because you have a choice whether or not, <clears throat> whether to drink it or not to drink it. You have a choice to decide I can quit. Or why do I do certain things? And so when you think about alcohol, you're saying, okay, I ain't nothing wrong with taking a little sip here. But what happens after you take that first sip, that second sip, that third sip, that fourth sip? Now you're on tables acting a fool. Now you're, you're, you're in positions and where now, now you're turned on or you're horny or whatever. And now you're in a position where now two people who don't, who's not thinking is going to do something that's against what God has said. Everything Satan does is target to come against God's word. It, it, everything he implemented into your life is for you to be drawn away through your own lust to be enticed. Think about it like this. The reason why I don't drink is because I have standards against it. I like to take a step back and look why shouldn't I do it. It's not by why I should, but the thing is why shouldn't I do it. What, what, where is it going to put me? What position is going to put me in? Is it going to be pleasing to God that the next night, the next day after I wake up? That's why I don't. When you put a standard up in something, and when you have high standards against it, Satan can't come against it. But when you have low standards, Satan can overtake you because your standards is not high enough to keep his demonic pressures from pushing you down. Now, I know a lot of us go through depression. <clears throat> and a lot of us have busy lifestyles. And we have, we have stuff that's coming against us. I understand that. I understand that we go through tough times and life's pressure is pressing us down so alcohol gets me away from that depression. Now you putting, the thing is you have to think, am I putting this in place of what God is supposed to do in my life? See, sometimes we put voids in our life. We put things in our life to heal this void that only God can fill. See, what alcohol can do, alcohol can temporarily handle what God can permanently handle. 
See, Satan wants to give us things that's supposed to temporarily handle something that God can permanently handle. That's why if you ask anybody when Christ came into their life, Christ permanently handled that situation. Only what alcohol can temporarily handle. Alcohol can only get you in a certain way for a certain amount of hours. Then after the hours are gone, you're throwing up and stuff. Then you got to redo it. With Jesus, you don't have to redo it. Alcohol, you have to keep on doing just to get that certain high to get your mind off something. But when you get in God's word, it temporarily, not temporary, it permanently handles your void or anything you're going with. <clears throat> and when you think about clubbing, clubbing is an environment to facilitate the demonic work into getting you to lose your reason. I mean, you got girls with short skirts on. You got fellas with the mentality of, of what they're trying to get after this. So what does man do? I heard about it. It's, it's, it's a simple game. Satan entices the man through his lust. Think about it like this. It all starts with the conceptual stage of sin. You have men that are bound by pornography, bound by lust. God, Satan, in his, in his youthful age of a man, gets him so caught up in porn or gets him so caught up in sexual things that it lures that lust out of their sinful nature. Now, year after year, that lust is being, being toppled on with more lust. Now, they're such a lustful person that their main agenda, their main motive is to go into an environment to get another person within a, a lustful uh, thing. That's what happens. And then you got the women who haven't had fathers in their lives now looking for love in all the wrong places and thinking that the only way they can get worth is from a temporary uh, 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 a temporal attention from a male that will facilitate her needs. Now she's there in that environment. He's there in that environment. He's lustfully trying to pull out her, her emotional needs that she's lacking. He's going to spit game to her to the point to where now she's thinking that he really cares. And then they go out. He go gets her a drink. She loses her reasoning. He gets facilitated his lustful needs while she gets nothing facilitated. So why go to clubs when you're listening to music and it's getting your body on rhythm? It's making you lose the ability to think. It's making you lose your ability to use common sense. That's what my views are. And that aligns up with God's word because we have to understand that our body is the temple of God. We can't allow anything that's going to take away our ability to reason. We have a brain up here for a reason. We have a brain for a reason. And when, we, and when Satan takes the ability to think away, then only thing we'll be led by is our emotions. Emotions are only as solid as this sheet of paper. Emotions only indicate how you feel at the present time. But when you use your brain and you lose, use common sense, you will take a step back and say, you know what? This really is not worth it. So think about it today. Is it really worth it? Is it really worth to go to the clubs? I know people love to dance. I know people love to do such and such. I understand that. But the thing is, is it really worth it? I know people say, well, alcohol does this. But is it, feeling, is it going before God? Is it being placed in front of God? Think to yourself. Look beyond your emotions to see what is Satan trying to pull through your emotions. Look beyond how you feel at the present time. Look beyond how you feel like I have to be an adult and it's what adults do. Look beyond your selfish thinking and look and see what is Satan trying to do in your life to destroy you through alcohol, through clubbing, through whatever it was, is within that environment. Because think about it. Why go to the clubs, man? It's a waste of time anyway. Because that, dude, with that time you could be asleep. With that time you could be working on your vision and your dream. At that time, you could be patiently waiting for who God has for you. During that time, you could be doing so much, then wasting money, wasting time, doing something that's not going to benefit you. And the only thing you're going to look back at 30 and saying, those were the years of my life where I enjoyed that and all that, but it birthed nothing. So today, think about your choices. Think about, is it worth drinking alcohol and is it worth clubbing? And if you have any more questions... Or things that you say, man, I want to see what his views is about this. Go ahead and just send me a message on Facebook. Leave a comment on YouTube. Uh, check out my website, KeenanMaturian.com. Check out uh, my blog spot, uh, my blog site, WeTalkReal.blogspot.com. Uh, feel free to leave a comment. Feel free to share. God bless.